Chizaron Womiki. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a very special race that exists on EO known as the Shaikan. But before we jump into that, I'd like to mention a few things first. First of all, with the COVID-19 virus going around, I hope that you're all safe and sound. Make sure to practice proper hygiene and social distancing during this time to help us all slow the spread. Also, since most people are quarantined with not much to do right now, the official Spellforce Discord, together with the support of THQ Nordic, will be giving away a Steam key for Spellforce 3 Soul Harvest to one lucky winner who will be drawn at the end of this month. There's still time to enter, so for a chance to win it, follow the link in the description which will show you how to do so. But for now, let's get into the video. Like I already mentioned, the Shaikan are a very interesting race, mostly due to the fact that they weren't created by Aonia or any godly being. They were instead created by Janus Malachi, the head alchemist of the Hibernian Empire, roughly around the year 850 BC, which actually makes them slightly older than any of the dark races on Eo. I won't go too much into Malachi's past here, but it's important to know that in his search for more power, Malachi studied something called the Materia Prima, or as some of you may know it, the Seed of Life. This is the same seed that Aeonia planted onto Eo when he first came to it, and it can be found within the first races on Eo, and with the Shapers virtually non-existent at that time, the only other option for him were the dragons. Malachi's actual goal was to create a completely new race from scratch by using the Materia Prima, but he needed a way to obtain this knowledge first since no dragon would give it to him willingly. Keep in mind that this was also during a time when most of the dragons of Viara had been hunted down, so it wasn't exactly easy to find one. Until one day, the Hibernians captured an elder dragon known as Ur and brought him to Ankban to be executed there. Malachi seized this chance and made a deal with Ur. He would free him, but in exchange, Ur was to tell him the secret of the Materia Prima. To ensure that both of them would honor the deal, Malachi forced Ur to combine their blood with each other, which technically started the line of the Shaikan. Later on, once he had acquired the Materia Prima, Malachi continued trying to make his own race, but by doing so he caught the attention of the Guardians who decided to put an end to his efforts, since no one beside Aeonia was allowed to temper with Eo's creations. The Guardians punished Malachi, but before they could finish him off, he managed to use Ur, who was still bound to serve him due to their bond, to transfer his soul into the body of his own son. This way, Malachi escaped the punishment of the gods and the race of the Shaikan was born. The Shai Khan were always a powerful race. The blood of the dragon in their veins made them stronger, faster and overall better than the average humans, even exceeding the other races in their fighting capabilities. But due to Malachi's soul still lurking within their blood, they weren't able to ever really find peace. All the other races used to consider the Shai Khan traitors, deceivers and overall not loyal, which caused them to never be accepted by either the light or the dark side. Due to their exceptional skills on the battlefield, they would often serve as mercenaries but nothing beyond that. The name Shai Khan itself transfers to godless from the dark languages, which just shows that they aren't affiliated with neither the light nor the dark gods. Furthermore, the soul of Malachi would, once every generation, find a new host to carry it within the Shai Khan race. Usually, that soul would simply be slumbering, but during its time in the last soul carrier that existed, the character we play as in Spellforce 2 Shadow Wars, Malachi's soul awoke and tried to continue his work from the past, almost succeeding in that process. Luckily for everyone, the Soul Bearer was able to put an end to it, and the Malachi Soul had been destroyed in the year 19 AC, which finally brought peace to the Shai Khan and allowed them to choose their own path in life. During the events of Spellforce 2, we visit both of the homelands of the Shai Khan. First, the fortress of Shai Kua in the Iron Fields, which had been their original home, located between the lands of the High Mark, La, and the Orkish lands to the south. However, since this area had first been conquered by the Dark Elves of the Pact and later by the humans of the High Mark, the Shai Khan required a new home. The Soul Bearer decided that this new home should be the Westgard, a piece of land that he got by King Ulf of the High Mark for his services to the crown. Since the Dragon Patriarch Ur also died during the events of Spellforce 2 Shadow Wars, there was no reason for the Shai Khan to stay in the Iron Fields, so they simply migrated. This is not to say that the Shai Khan only ever lived in Shai Kua or the Westgard. Throughout the books, there are mentions of different smaller Shai Khan clans that exist, namely in Nortender. They weren't numerous, and we don't know whether or not they survived the events of the Convocation, but they did exist. Most Shai Khan nowadays either roam across Eo or have settled down in the West Guard, where they take on contracts to earn money for their people through an organization known as the Hand of the Dragon. The relations of the Shai Khan with the other races have also improved greatly during that time, due to the Soul Bearer forging good relationships with the Elves of Dunmora and the Dwarves of Underhall. 
However, the task of the Shai Khan was far from done. Since their dragon patriarch Ua had died, they were in dire need of a new dragon to replace him. A task in which they eventually succeeded during the events of Spellforce 2 Dragonstorm in the year 24 AC. There, the Shai Khan combined their power with the power of the surviving dragons of Goldland to defeat an awoken and power-hungry Shaper. This new alliance between the dragons and the Shai Khan will also prove to be a key element to reconnecting Eo after Roan's portal system malfunctions, but sadly, this is where the story stopped and we have yet to get the continuation of it. Now how do you imagine the events playing out after Dragonstorm? Let me know in the comments below, I'm interested to see how other people would interpret it. Anyhow, the latest condition the Shai Khan raises in during the year 24 AC is a rather good one. They have a stable new homeland and are respected by many races now and not just the light ones either. Their numbers may be small compared to the other races but they more than make up for it with their capabilities as warriors and mages. Most Shai Khan are humans, however that doesn't mean that only humans can become the Shai Khan. The blood of the dragon in them gives them some special abilities which other races lack, for example, they can use its power to revive their fallen brethren or even non-Shai Khan for a certain time after their death. If this is used on a non-Shai Khan individual, which can be a human or any other race for that matter, that individual becomes a Shai Khan as a result. And those would be the most important things about the Shai Khan race in general. What do you think about them? Do you like the Shai Khan race, or do you rather prefer some other of the races on EO? Let me know as well. If you want to discuss this video's topic with me or other fans, you can join the official Spellforce Discord to do so. This is also the place where you enter the giveaway I mentioned at the start of the video, so it's beneficial for you either way. But that will be everything for now. If you enjoyed the video, liking and sharing is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe not to miss any future uploads. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.